Hallelujah. Shine on me. Shine on me. Your grace, it shines on me. Shines on me. It shines on me. Is your grace it shines on me? It shines on me. Your grace it shines on me. It shines on me. It shines on me. Your grace, somebody sing to him right now. It shines on me, it shines on me. Your grace, it shines on me, it shines on me, it shines on me. Is your grace shines on me? It shines on me. It shines on me. Your grace shines on me. Shines on me. Shines on me. Is the old way? Is the old way? One more time, he signed something. Shines on me, it shines on me. It's your grace. We thank you for your grace. It shines on me, it shines on me. Your grace, it shines on me. It shines on me. It shines on me. It's your grace. Can somebody thank him because of his grace? Can you reflect on where you were before the grace of God began to transform your life? Shines on me, it shines on me. 
It is your grace. <laughs> oh, Selina, hambre scope la urenali. Shofre scato bonde cabelli na dodo se la braita comba is. Le so se lambro, o kembre, supre cabosha cadia ambre scobelante. Mi ambro sketo ke bobo sateli. La apre scofitante e la opre sataculia. Shines on me. <laughs> Shines on me, Lord. Is your way? Kilobo samena laya shines on me, shines on me. Your grace, it shines on me, shines on me, shines on me. It is your grace. And in your presence today, we acknowledge the workings of your grace on our lives and the beauty that it has brought upon us. We acknowledge in the congregation of the just, it is your grace so that no man will be opportuned to make a boast in your presence we return glory and the praise and the honor and majesty unto your name O king of kings in jesus mighty name we pray amen please you may be seated make somebody welcome in the house of God. It's, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Um, I'm confident, my brother Joel, I'm confident that God will do great things. And I'm not saying it because um, that's what people say. God will do great things through your ministry in this city and beyond this city. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, salute my friends. Uh, Apostle Gideon Odoma. Austin John Ubore. Ike Chiko, Peter the Evangelist. Pastor Hassan, all the way from Lagos, you're welcome. All right, let's do Bible study for 15 minutes, please. Ensure we are able to maintain this atmosphere. No, 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 you are doing a good job. Uh, and we'll find out where God is headed. Turn your Bible to the book of Galatians, chapter number one. Galatians, chapter number one. Galatians, chapter number one. So you spread the word. Our friend and brother, Chiovilos, is married now. Spread the word. <laughs> he's, he's, he's married. He's married now. But I certify you, brethren... That the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus. At some point in the ministry of Apostle Paul, he had to unveil the source of the products that he was dispensing. 
and in attempting to unveil the source of his gospel, he revealed possible sources. And one of the possible sources was that it is possible for it to be delivered unto you by a man. But he says the product that I'm dispensing doesn't have its origin in man. The product that I'm dispensing, and that's not to say he was by any means downplaying the role of critical men that God puts on the path of destiny to shape a man's life according to the crucible, according to the mold of God's ordination for him. He was not downplaying that fact, but he was trying to be sincere and honest to us that the things that he is dispensing derive from a disclosure from Jesus. A disclosure from Jesus. Now, in a day like this where the absolutes of God, the ideals of God, the, uh, the prescriptions of God are no longer very common because of the infiltration that we have suffered by reason of doctrines of devils and the operation of seducing spirits, it is needful for us to trace the things that we dispense and to find out where they derive from. Jesus was addressing the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil. In the Greek, the word of there is ek. Ek. Ek means you derive from. Ek means you originate from. So when Jesus comes to conduct a test of spiritual substance, he doesn't test at face value. He tests with the parameter of ek, source, origin. And so what we are seeing here is that Paul is giving us an insight into the origin of the things that he's dispensing. He's saying, I stumbled upon the revelation of Jesus. So in a day of confusion like this, we need to travel deeper than we are doing. We need to travel into the revelation of Jesus. And I'm going to show you a few things this morning as the Lord gives me utterance. I'm still operating within time, the, the time frame. For now, we'll focus on 45 minutes of dispensing. The revelation of Jesus. Now, I need to define what the revelation of Jesus is. Because the locus of our spiritual reality is Jesus. He's the source of the anointing that energizes us to Provide service to the body of Christ. He is our example. He is our standard. Beyond him and without him, there is no divine revelation. So everything that has to do with divine revelation is summed up in, in Jesus. In fact, the Bible says, God who has sundry times and in diverse manners, speaking times past unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days, Spoken unto us by his son. You see, previously in the Old Testament, are you with me? All right, stay with me. Previously in the Old Testament, God used functionaries, men. His spirit came upon men and they declared the counsel of God. God in the last days has decided to modify his, his speakings. 
So when you read your Bible and you, you find things like the testimony of God, you find things like the laws of God, you find things like the covenant of God, and there is a temptation for you to think that all these expressions mean the same thing, you are mistaken. Because when we are talking about the testimony of God, we are talking about the things that God said about himself by himself. Now, there were, there were moments in scripture where people spoke about God. There were moments in scriptures where people were inspired to speak for God. But that does not amount to a testimony. The testimony of God is when God himself speaks about himself by himself. And in the last days, that's the shape of the deliverables that will come from God. He speaks unto his own by his son. It will take the voice of God to speak about God, to reveal God. And the reason why there was a change in the spokes administration of God is because in the last days there will be so many people speaking so many sources of utterance so many things trying to masquerade so God will switch on to what we call the mode of testimony where he will be the one speaking about himself by himself and so the basis upon which accurate ministry can be discerned in the end time is the credentials that Apostle Paul gave us in the book of Galatians chapter 1. He says, what I'm preaching. And the revelations that you have held had me herald from place to place derives. And that's critical. That's critical for an end time voice to have his bearing occasioned by a revelation of Jesus. Now come with me. Because what we want to major on are some very strong prophetic cardinal points that must be put in place in order for us to na navigate accurately. I have, I have listened to people on the continent of Africa a lot of people on the continent of Africa that claim to have a prophetic ministry. Uh, if you say you have a prophetic ministry and you are not a master of Bible prophecy, there is no way you can be accurate in prophetic ministry. <laughs> you, 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 your, your, your prophetic ministry is out of sync with the context. It's a toy. It's not part of the stream. And you are prone to a lot of error and to, to leading people on a path that is inconsistent with the highway that has already been built. That's the difference between someone trying to um, traffic an utterance and he doesn't know the revelation of Jesus on the matter. Now, in the book of Revelation chapter 1, Are you with me? In Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, this is John speaking. He said the revelation of Jesus. See, it's the same tone. This revelation of Jesus, the Father gave unto him. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Are you there? Now if you check this verse of scripture. You will discover that Jesus in this context is the revelation. And he is the revelator. It means when you encounter Jesus, the description of your encounter 
is going to be captured in disclosures. You see, there were disclosures that the father committed unto him for him to be the expositor of. For him to be the revelator of. There were dimensions of authority that the father gave unto him to reveal things. As we progress, you will see, and maybe you'll be able to judge what you have been receiving if it has a source in Jesus. And the need for us to do such things again and again to sharpen our cutting edge in this critical moment where we need to bear witness of his resurrection is because of the falsehood that seeks to overtake us and overwhelm us. And part of the assignment of prophets in this time is to bring the perspective of Jesus. It might not be popular. It might not be trending. But if the church will fulfill her corporate destiny, it is going to be because we come into head-on collision with the revelation of Jesus. So he's the revelator and the revelation. And the Bible says that it was the father that gave him the authority to begin to disclose these things unto his servants. Not just everybody, but those that are in active service in the administration of kingdom things upon the face of the earth. Everyone can buy a microphone and be saying something. But Paul is saying the gospel that I preached had a source. It was occasioned by the revelation of Jesus. Okay. Now, so, so this revelation was going to be facilitated through encounters unto the servants of Jesus. And there is credibility about this revelation. It will shortly come to pass. But you see, the means, the means by which this revelation was conveyed is, is, the, is the issue of interest to me at this time. In attempting to convey the revelation, Jesus decided to send an angel. Are you with me? There were revelations that derived from Jesus. But in the dispensing of this revelation, he decided to send an angel unto John. And when the angel came to John, the angel communicated the message to John by sign language. Yeah, check it. Check it in the Greek. You will see sign language. So the first question we need to ask ourselves, have we developed our spiritual capacity enough to understand sign language? Sometimes these disclosures are not in English language. In fact, the Bible says, Jesus was the one speaking. He says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. He says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are not English language. They are not French language. The other day we found ourselves in France. And because we could not speak French, and they, even if a French man can speak English, he chooses not to speak English just because you are claiming that you don't understand his language. From Charles de Gaulle Airport, we were lost, we were stranded because <laughs> we could not. Do you know that a pastor will be stranded if he doesn't understand this sign language? 
we moved from place to place. I had to click on my phone and, and I located the hotel and then use the phone to navigate my way to. Because if you speak to someone, say, hey, how are you doing? The person say, send a pas, come pro. They all knew how to speak English. But they are not willing to condescend to your level. You need to upgrade to their level. Now, I wonder, yes, we need, please tell your neighbor we need to upgrade. You've been on the sidelines for too long. We need to, we need to upgrade. He sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. When I began to meditate on this scripture, I now realized why Daniel was able to interpret the handwriting on the wall. It was angelic communication, angelic runes. And the man had grown in, in his grace, in his capacity. If you notice his credentials in the book of Daniel chapter 5. Now, let's check his credentials. We have, we have a long way to go, but we'll just do 45 minutes and we'll pray together. Are you there? All right. Give me a moment. Let me find my scripture. Because this particular verse is not part of my script. Okay. Daniel chapter 5, we'll begin from verse number 11. Now this was his CV, his curriculum vitae. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made master of the magicians. That means his dimension was higher than that of them that practiced magic. It will interest you to know they were, they were in Nebuchadnezzar's employment and Daniel was the head of the department because his dimension bested magic, bested astrology. You know, astrologers, through the alignment of the sun, moon, and star, can come up with, with predictions. In fact, astrologers believe that before things happen on the earth, there are signs of them appear in the skies. Unfortunately for them, they look to the mystery of the sky to tell the future. They look to the signs of heaven to tell the future. But for us, signs follow us. We are, we are head of signs. We are head of the signs. In fact, if you, if, you, if you are accurate, an accurate believer that is in sync with God, it's actually supposed to be a sign. People can read the move of God by your conviction, your body, and your prophecy, the things that you are emphasizing. Anyone that wants to be part of the will of God will read that sign and align himself to the emphasis that is coming because the man is in sync with God. That's what Isaiah said in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 when he says that I and the children that are given unto me, we are, the one, we are for signs and wonders. We, are the, we, we determine, we appoint us to prophetic signs and seasons. Our alignment to God makes us a sign that you need to look at if you want to know what God is doing. So we do not look for signs. The signs follow us. So for people that are not in sync with God, we are the best sign that others can, can look at. That's what that scripture is saying. He said, say, behold, no, 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 don't follow me. Just stay on the scripture. Stay there. Let's always come back. He said, there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom 
like the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of the magicians astrologers Chaldeans and soothsayers next verse you see what I'm talking about knowing the sign language of the spirit what I'm talking about is the only way by which we can be ahead of witchcraft is the only way by which we can be ahead of people that draw their reference from the kingdom of darkness is the only way we can be ahead of them whose wisdom is found in darkness he said for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding interpreting dreams showing of hard sentences and dissolving doubts were found in the same Daniel. That is credential. Among all these items mentioned here, there was something mentioned that is strange. Because go to the eleven. Let me show you the strange thing mentioned. Concerning him, the Bible says, light. This is a description of the anointing that he had. Light and understanding. Yes, we can understand interpreting dreams. We can understand the dissolving hand sentences. But what, what may be difficult for us to understand is the investment of light that was found on this man. I hope you know what light is. The Bible says light is that which makes manifest. It is because of light that he was able to dissolve hard sentences because the meaning of the hard sentence is conceived and then you present it to him. The light will shine on it and he will break it down. Oh, you wrap up your communication in Proverbs. The light will shine on it and it will become bare. Just like your ATM card has a pin code, when Daniel looks on your ATM card, the light in him will shine on it and the code will jump out. If you have an Ecolac box and it runs on a combination and you, you yourself might even forget the combination lock, you bring it to Daniel, the light, because light makes what? because of that light that was upon him that was why you could not hide any communication in any language at all including angelic language you couldn't hide it so when there was a writing on the wall they said ah, there was a man in the days of your father whenever darkness begins to operate it operates with a mystery it operates with something that, that the devil knows you are not aware of. They say, yes, your spiritual things are, are rough with mysteries. Even the kingdom of God is shrouded in mysteries. So that you cannot stumble upon his depth at face value. When spiritual things begin to arise, it's a battle of secrecy and depths. That's why things are sealed with the seal of God. I know you have seen it in the book of Revelation. A book that was sealed with seven seals. If God has written the book for, for our benefit, why is it sealed? If the kingdom of God is the context in which we are supposed to operate, why does the Bible say we should seek, seek the kingdom? Seek it. Because kingdom things are sealed things. And everyone will need to access light. In order for him to unveil the combination lock that is shrouded either in language, in mystery, in a proverb. Sometimes people see an eclipse. A man of light will come and tell you the, what is hidden in this sign. You will find so many people trying to be prophetic, trying to run commentaries. 
don't talk until you have light. The, the, the talk is too much. Everywhere is flooded with people talking. At this time that Daniel's credential was read to the current king so that he can seek solution from him, he had retired. He was summoned in old age from retirement because there was a writing. And they had tried the abilities of the, of the enchanters. They tried the abilities of the astrologers and the magicians. And they fell short of what it was required to unveil the meaning of the writing. It was obvious that it was not a writing in a human tongue. And that was why those guys could not get it. Because they were wise in their time. There is something beyond the wisdom of darkness. And that's why the Bible is full of miscalculations of the devil. The Bible says if the princes of this world had known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. It was a miscalculation. The moment they miscalculated, when they killed Jesus, what they did not know was that they set him free. They set him free from his own body. They set him free from being... A single entity and because he's free from his own body if you believe him today his spirit will possess you and as you grow in him satan will have many more jesus's at various levels to contend with just because he made an error killing him even if you check your own life you will see miscalculations the, the, the things you experienced were not the things satan intended prayer had manipulated it and the outcome of your experience was not consistent with the original intent. The, one guy called me. He just bought a brand new car and he was flowing through town. You know, <laughs> just flowing. And before the close of work that day, he had an accident. And he cried out. It's a challenge. And I told him, do you think the devil, it was your car he wanted to scratch? <laughs> so in all his dealings, is the, is the color of your, the dent that he wanted to give you. It was just another manifestation of a miscalculation. He didn't calculate properly. He wanted your blood to be spilled on the tar. But there was a mistake in his calculation. The reason is because he doesn't have light. Yes, sir. Have light. Notice that this woman said that the wisdom that Daniel had was like the wisdom of the gods. The wisdom of the deities. Those deities that people take in riverine areas, they take Keno and travel to where there are mountains to go and consult them. He said, when if Daniel is around, you don't need to go to the creeks. He's a deity in himself because he has light. Now, when I study the scriptures, I see how, how we have refused to grow in the possibilities that are bound in Christ. Many of us have been measured into time and we operate by human instincts. We don't understand what it means to be led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. What I came to tell you this morning is that communication has shifted. Amen. Communication has shifted. And if we don't shift along, we will not understand the new language by which God is communicating. My friend the other day was, was an expert in a certain programming language called Visual Basic. And after four years, he, he was not into programming. Four years later, he wanted to try his hands on a few things and he found out that he was an illiterate. He was, what he knew was totally obsolete. The language had advanced. In fact, more effective languages like Python have already been generated. And, and that's strange to him because when he went to school as a computer science student, there was nothing like Python. The programming language that the average believer is using is so obsolete. And that's why we have not been able to contain the devils of our time. The preacher 
has been restricted to be a man that talks a talkative like a newscaster a parrot but we need an upgrade the language has shifted in order for us to be eligible to receive the revelation of Jesus. Many times we will need an upgrade. Many times. Many times. And even as a preacher, there are times where God will need to summon you from the pulpit. You leave the pulpit for a while and go and upgrade. The language has changed. The language has changed. The communication has changed. The wisdom that was found in Daniel was like the wisdom of the God. Whereas Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were asked to bow to the image that Nebuchadnezzar put up, Daniel was not asked to bow. Because in the eyes of Nebuchadnezzar, he was a deity. Many of us are bowing down to the strain of the economy, bowing down to circumstances, bowing down to situations. People that have upgraded their language don't bow. We don't bow. He was head of the magicians. When are we going to display the fact that witches and warlocks are down in the, in the ladder? There's an evidence that you show that we are superior. And our superiority is not yet on display because we have not upgraded. Please help me preach to your neighbor. If the servant of darkness is not yielded to Satan, you are not preaching. I say preach to your neighbor. If the servant of darkness is more yielded to Satan than you are yielded to God, then darkness will overcome light. Under such circumstances, darkness can you check 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 out the on your nations is it reflective of your god the tale the paradox of our nations is suggestive of the fact that our light is not is not bright enough i remember the other day we were praying in our own territory that God should install a political leader that will align with righteousness. Okay? So, who were praying? Who were praying? Who were praying? Who were praying? And it was obvious that our prayers had a massive impact. Because the hearts of the people had turned away from the agent of darkness. And then this agent of darkness, when he checked the statistics, checked the fact that he's not likely to win. He turned to spiritual means. Sacrifice a young, a newborn child. 24 hours before the election, a newborn child was sacrificed. The whole election was done. There was confusion everywhere. At the, end, the, at the end of the confusion, at the end of the thing, a man that was not ordained by God was crowned. The agent of darkness know what to do when there's a tightrope to overturn things. How much, how much skill have you developed? Now, what can your prayer do if you say, if they bring you on the scene in a certain situation, what can your prayer do? You know what is lacking? It's light. <laughs> light. Light. 
Because when light goes to work, the measure of the Chaldeans and the sorcerers will be discovered to be way beneath the capacity of light. He was made master of the magicians. Okay. I have three, three things I need to drop with you, but maybe I'll just drop one. Because the, the burden on my heart is intense. But listen, maybe, maybe we need to do Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 before I drop one point. After which we will pray as a congregation. What I'm teaching you this morning are my personal contemplations. There's a realm of light that I know that I've not been ushered into. That I desire desperately. And I will not stop seeking it until God has mercy on my poor soul and grants me access. There is a language you need to know. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See that thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. He said, I have received, I am one of your brethren that has received the testimony of Jesus. The splendor I'm manifesting, the light I have with which I'm unveiling the things I'm telling you. I have it because I received the testimony of Jesus. When I unveil the things that I received, you, you, you liken me to God. But you see, do not do it because I'm one of your fellow brethren. It's not that I've been upgraded. I have been elevated. Just like Daniel was elevated that they saw deity in him. When you are elevated into the realm of light, ah, people, they say this is the appearance of God. He wanted to, you know, they say, calm down. I am not God. I am one like you. But the difference between me and you <laughs> is that I received what? The testimony of Jesus. I received the testimony of Jesus. The revelator stumbled into my domain. The revelation stumbled into my domain. You know, you still remember in the book of John chapter 12 when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If any man walketh after me, he shall not walk in darkness but he shall have the light of life. Meaning that the life of God on your inside is capable of, of reflecting that light that God is. And if you receive that light that God is in your heart, Jesus said you will never walk in darkness. John, as powerful as John was, he wanted to go prostrate. He said, he said, my true identity is that I'm one like you, but I have received what? A testimony. Oh, I told you, don't follow me, just stay. I've received the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Then he gave us a definition of what the testimony of Jesus is. For the testimony of Jesus is a spiritual prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the life of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the substance of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus, hearing Jesus speak, 
is the essence of prophecy. It's a life source of prophecy. When you hear a man prophesy, it, the substance, what generated those utterances is the testimony of Jesus. I was in prayer just all by myself, just praying for my city, praying for my location. And, and when I persisted in the prayer for a few days, the hand of God came into the room and I was knocked off. I fell under the intense presence of God that has formed in that place. And when I fell under the intense presence of God, the Lord took my spirit and we went into the past. Then I saw men that God had previously raised to bear witness of his name and his resurrection in my city. These men that God raises, there is something that he gives them. And the moment he gives them that thing, they start becoming prominent. Their voice is heard. People's hearts turn to them. Now you might think... <laughs> You might think the reason why people hear you is because you are on social media. There's a bishop in my city. He's also on social media. Gets like five views, seven views, ten views. So he's so angry at me. The reason why he's, he's angry at me is he, he believes that I'm the one that obscured the room. Social media is like the sky, for God's sake. Now, I don't know, it's once in my lifetime when, when we were airborne that I saw another plane. Once, just once. And where was that? In the US. Yes. Have you ever seen any plane? Maybe you sit by the, by the window seat. Have you ever seen any plane by the... I said, hey! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Only once. And I tell you, I have really been airborne. So if there's anything there, I should have seen it. It's once in my flight time, I looked through my window and saw another plane. And the reason why it was so is because in their own airports, they have different runways, not like this, our standard gauge. They have different runways. So as you are coming in, somebody is going out and the other, in fact, four or five planes can land at the same time so that's why i saw the sky is so vast the fact that you are flying you have not done it the next one that wants to fly has enough room he thought that if he stays on social media there's a platform to talk that human beings will hear him he doesn't know that what makes people hear you is that Jesus gives you something. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. So I saw, I saw these preachers. Jesus will give him something. Then he starts becoming influential. Start becoming influential. So the real thing God gives you that we human beings interpret as blessing is influence. That's the real thing he gives you. He gives you influence. That's what he gives you. It is through that influence that so many things happen. But the real thing he gives you is influence. And that influence is tied to a spiritual deposit. The moment he re removes that deposit, the influence will win. Even if you are so smart that you build an administration around the influence which many people have been trained to do. So that even if God is not there, they can still have something strapped. Have, they have, can have people in a charismatic zoo, but God is no longer there. They come and feed them rations. The tigers will jump. But God has left. But the people were smart enough to set up an administration. 
sometime at some point the god that is in the system is the administration because god has left when god leaves influence will begin to wane you will need human methods to keep things going and when you begin to use human methods to keep things going satan will propose himself to become the head of the synagogue he will take the place of god because god has left everything is still going on but the source has changed and that's why paul had to tell us where his source was from the egg has changed the origin has changed so god put that influence on that preacher one preacher name would tell because most of you are from that place. So if I start mentioning names, you will know what. To, and then when you know the name, you are no longer listening to the message. You are analyzing the person. So this preacher grew. He expanded. The city began to gather to him. He died. When he died, 12 years later, Jesus took the same thing, put on another, another man. This man that died was a man that was the original man trained for that role. But because of a little carelessness, he was exposed at some point and he was cut down. The second man that they gave after 12 years was not prepared for the role. They didn't know there was any role like that. But because Jesus wanted to hold sway in the land, this guy is not prepared. They gave him. When they gave him, he started becoming influential. He started becoming, people believed him. People began to gather around him. And because he was not prepared for the role, he thought he was the one that was the star. He used to boast. Big guy. When I went there, I saw the lady that was the secretary. I knew he had died because we went to the same campus with that lady, the same university with that lady. Ah. So in this boasting that he was boasting, he couldn't see this lady. Oh, I pity. That was the last time I visited the place. I knew that he was dead. I knew he was dead. The next time I saw him, he was so sick that I don't want to describe what I he died he died a shameful death then the mantle was given to somebody else that was not ready young people began to gather to him young people began to gather something began to take place the moment you are giving that man to, there is a demon. A demon, how will I describe this demon? It is standing erect, but it has a shell of a tortoise. That demon will come. The first thing the demon will do is that if there are people that are praying for you, somebody that is committed to praying for you, it will disconnect you from that person. And I don't want to mention names. I would have shown you the pattern from the first one. Because that's what Jesus showed me in this encounter. From the first one to the second one. The same pattern. When that prayer support is withdrawn, you begin to lose your life of holiness. And just like that lady on our campus struck this man, you become interested to people that will destroy, that are destructive, that Satan had trained in the art of destruction. Uh, 
And then Jesus told me, we will give you this thing. But you have eight years to prepare. Within these eight years, meanwhile, and that's a privilege. I'm not a good person. I'm not, I don't even know why Jesus decided to choose me. Because I'm not as strong as any one of these people. So in terms of strength, I don't have it. He said, we will give you this thing, but we'll give you in eight years' time. Do you know that the noisiest, the noisiest season of that city was that eight years? So many noisemakers rose, and I knew from the revelation of Jesus that none of them had anything. May you may you not be among people that make noise go and look for Jesus I beheld this your city and I saw a wilderness a vast wilderness and only few altars that had the color green the other altars were brown some were black so you know green means it's alive brown means it used to be here Black means gone. And I saw congregations gathering around brown altars. I saw some others gathering big congregations around black, three black altars. God was saying something used to be here. Sustained by administration. Those eight years were loud years. People were. He said, if you do well, it was not as if the promise was unconditional. He said, if you do well, if you do well, because I know the original person that was meant for, for the mantle, that one was trained for it. None of us was trained for it. So he said, if you do well, I will test you with this. In 2019, in August, on the 19th day of August 2019, that was where the shofar was blown in heaven, announcing my own rising. The shofar was blown on the 19th of August 2019. But the season, we began to experience the season in March 2020. And anytime there was something maybe great that happened and I wanted to celebrate, you would say, if you behave well. Do you know that? That statement, <laughs> he was just trying to make me understand that, you see, this thing is conditional. You, you were not the one that was originally designed for this. So, if you behave well, if you behave well, if you behave well, The eight years that I spoke about, I'm trying to bring perspective about. In these eight years, before these eight years, two years before these eight years, okay, I was somewhere in the Middle East and the Lord appeared to me. That was when he said, the youth, the youth, the youth. He said, use your power of insight. To deliver them from destruction and I will open the gates of nations to you. So when I came back from that trip, I started going from campus to campus. People were saying I was a campus apostle. They were using that to mock me, but it was Jesus that commissioned me to do that. I was in Lagos. When you are going to preach in Sokoto, you need two flights from Lagos to Abuja, from Abuja to Sokoto. 
The guys you are going to preach to on campus don't have money to even pay for my ticket. But I was obedient to Jesus. So for 12 years, I was hopping from campus to campus because Jesus said I should do that. I went, when I was checking how, how I moved, I went around Nigeria six times in 12 years. It was after those days that the shofar was sounded and I was given the opportunity to step into the next phase. Then that thing began to work. I had to go and study all the people that carried it before me. Why was there a challenge? God will not tell you everything. If you are, if you are willing to stay afloat, you will take responsibility for your navigation. When I discovered what was wrong, I adjusted my life. The adjustment took me how many years? The adjustment in terms of prayer, the adjustment in terms of fasting, the adjustment in terms of sacrificial giving. Do you know what? I found out that sacrificial giving is a big thing in the kingdom of God. Make yourself a sacrificial giver. After 10 years, compare notes with casual resistance. Sacrificial. 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 The ability to lay it down. The power. It takes a lot of strength to do that. Sacrificial. Sacrificial. And when people see that you are such a person, they will cash in on it. Those people that are laboring to receive from you have have signed that they will never be great. You know, they think they are white. They are, so, oh, he has a, an open heart. So I, I just plug in, then you, you, you cash out. You plug, you cash out, you cash out. In 10 years' time, give them if you have them. Give them. Those ones will never give. You see, it's not the man that has that gives, it's the giver that gives. Is a giver that gives. If a man has not yet given for 10 years, he doesn't know the power of giving. If you have not prayed for 10 years consistently, you don't know the power of prayer. If you have not prayed, fasted for 10 years consistently, you don't know the power of fasting. You are just moving around the, the sidelines. You are a statistic that will be, it's okay, you are number four, you are five. You are a statistic. The revelation of Jesus that you have is going to shape your life. It will affect the, your outlook to life. It took me years. It took me years to adjust in the area of the mistakes I saw. That was why I stayed in that wilderness. I saw big cities like this. I saw big cities like Lagos. I remained in that wilderness. Once upon a time, the senior ministers of my city came to me. Significant ones came to me and said, you are wasting here. Move out of this place. You will end up like us. My heart shook. I went back to Jesus. That was not what Jesus was saying. So even people with their good intentions have the ability to sway you from the path. May our civilization go beyond good intentions. Amen. The eight years were silent for me, but noisy in my city. But God was not doing anything in my city for that time. When the sofa was blown on the 19th of August, 2019, approval was given for me to be granted the opportunity. And when the thing came, it generated influence, started coming. I remember one day when my sitting room, just praying. I've never had that experience before and I've not had it till today. 
We're just praying in my sitting room. Just praying. Just praying. 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 Pray. And suddenly, my eyes open. I saw an angel of God. He walked straight to me. He touched me on the chest. And my spirit went with him. I was still, I was still physically standing. But I was seeing where we were going. Took me to a place in my city. And asked me, do you know where we are? I said, no. Where is this? He mentioned my city. I said, no. We are not in my city. Because I know my city very well. He didn't answer me anymore. Then he took one stick. The place was unswept, unkept, and dry leaves filled everywhere. Took one stick, opened one area. You know, I've worked in the oil industry for 16 years. If, 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 because of that, if I see crude oil, even in my dream, I know it. So he took the stick, opened somewhere there, then I saw it, it was crude oil. He told me, this crude oil is the resources that we put in place for this man. The man he was pointing at was the last man that they gave that thing. But the man was not obedient enough to spend from it. He said, I brought you here because you begin to spend from it now. That was how we built that building. When God decides to focus on you, what he gives, what his presence will do to you is that it will bring influence around your life. That influence will produce so many things, but the real thing is influence. That was why the story changed. That was why everything changed. People have come to me and asked me for formulas. What buttons did you press? What are the things? I, I, I couldn't tell them it, it, it's not in formulas. There's something beyond formulas. I don't know how to explain what I'm saying. I have release in my spirit. That's why I'm saying this. It's not by formula. Continue what you are doing. Faithfully. It's not as if our methods were contemporary or our style was recommended. We maintained our crude, our crude shape. It was not about your shape. It's about the thing that was committed. He said it came by the revelation, the disclosures of Jesus. The disclosures of Jesus. The disclosures of Jesus. Now, I read one scripture to us and I close. Oh, my Jesus. The disclosures of Jesus. That's what we need to seek this season. Because the season has shifted again. And now, when it shifts like this, it means they have carved out some thrones in the heavenlies. Yes, some fresh thrones. And they are scouting for men to usher in. So that the tempo, the frequency, the shape of things in the earth can begin to change. Your preaching cannot do much. But if you are seated on that throne, you can even come on social media and laugh. And people will be blessed by your laughter. It's not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. It is of God that shows mercy. So there are three ways to encounter Jesus. Psalm 16, verse 8. 
Psalm 16, verse 8. I'll just read that and then we will begin to pray. So, part of what God wants to do So part of what God wants to do is that he's empowering people to seek him right now because there are new blueprints, there are new levels of empowerment that he wants to give. The landscape of the church in this city and in this nation is about to experience a change. God wants to set up new spokesmen and, and, and these are people that have been drilled to the furnace of affliction. They choose God in the midst of their sufferings so they can choose God when things are better. So God allowed some contradictions to visit them for a protracted period of time so that their hearts could be tested. Their devotion could be tested. There's a shift, something like a fracture that has opened up because God now God now wants to assign people to new designations. Some people have lost their jobs. Some people have lost some things. And you, you are troubled. No, it's a fracture. It's breaking you out of an old system. Because it wants to pedestal you into the new system. There's a new arrangement that God is bringing. There's a new place that God is calling his people. There's a new voice that he wants to receive. There's a new sound he wants to project. God is about to visit the land and from the last encounter I had I realized that God has decided not to change his mind about Nigeria the things that he wants to do with this nation indeed they will come to pass There are three ways to encounter Jesus. The first one is in Psalm 16 verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. He, set the, he saw the Lord in the spirit. This man <laughs> if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost I think it's time for us to take our journey. We need to take a flight now. It's time for us to make our move. God is about to touch down. A new set of functionaries will emerge. A new set of voices. Oracles. Men that speak by the mouth of God. The terrain will be shaped. The mountains will be humbled. The valleys will be elevated. The cedars of Lebanon will be taken out of the way. The stones will be gathered out. So that all the eyes will see the glory of God. A little one will become a thousand. A small one will become a strong nation. And though thy beginning be small, thy later end shall greatly increase. Someone call upon the name of the Lord. Silently, Kelebo, Malasena. Call upon the name of the Lord. Samina, Ela, Brosketa, Benda, Lala, Bobo, Alaite. Alala, Bobo, Sila, Manat. Ela, Sela, Bonde, La, Preskama. Alai le la broske na mila zanda babo na mila Sani ale ma 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 Ibra baba boske na ale ma There is a shift Oh 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 Mozilla, 
selamo Kilabo semenaya Eh eh Kilabo Kilabo That we run and not be weary. That we walk and not faint. That we mount up with wings like the eagle. I am a complete family, said Allah. Seek your face, we seek to migrate to understand the new language by which you speak to your inheritance. We speak to understand the technology that you have ordained to bring redemption unto your house. Look upon us with mercy. Look upon us with mercy. Listen to me, listen to me. I have a few minutes to... In the name of Jesus, if you can hear me say, Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Listen, 
Listen to me. Listen. 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 Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. I see in the spirit. For the heavens were open. And I saw fire descending. And this fire was quite intense. And the fire broke and distributed into 21 strands. There are 21 people that will come under the influence of this fire in the next 21 seconds. Father Lord, from my left hand side to my right hand side, to the back of the hall, those 21 vessels, those 21 vessels that you want to set ablaze so that they can take their journey in the spirit. I ask that you stretch forth your hand, locate each and every one of them, stretch forth, okay, it's coming stronger now. Locate them, locate them, locate them, locate them. Let your mighty hand come upon them. I ask, oh God, that you ignite your flame in the lives of these 21 individuals. It's coming stronger, 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 stronger. I see a lady there at the backside, and the hand of the Lord is coming upon this lady so mightily. So mightily, so mightily, so mightily. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Move.
give a command and miracles will begin to take place. The Lord will begin to heal. You begin to deliver. All kinds of things will begin to happen. But you keep your focus. Keep your focus as we travel. As we travel.
listen, 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 listen. Listen. I'm going to pray a prayer, give a quiet command, and then miracles will begin to take place. If I say in the name of Jesus, say the biggest amen you can find. In the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, this morning I bind every blinding spirit. Blinding spirits be bound. I bind every deafening spirit. Deafening spirits be bound. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every pain. Every symptom of paralysis, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against growths, tumors, fibroid, cancer. Dry up in the name of Jesus. I command the pain on that person's waist at the back to jump out in the name of Jesus Christ. I see someone in the congregation. One of your eyes is going dim. Now I say to that eye, let that yoke on you be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that pain you've been carrying and the curse that was laid upon you for many years. Break in the name of Jesus Christ. Break in the name of Jesus Christ. Break in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh. Ilokobe Maliasi. Elo Gresco Fono Mondele. Laborisa membre que sadokomba. Break in the name of Jesus. I command the pains to go. I command the affliction to cease. Let the yoke of the devil be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So I say to the eyes, I see in the name of Jesus. I say to the ears, ears, hear in the name of Jesus. I say to the pain, pain, go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name mighty name we are praying we are going to conduct a test on your body for those of you that have reading glasses remove it and begin to read I'll take three testimonies and then I run away if you notice that you can read the pain has gone your ears you can run a test on your ears your ear can hear please sit down sit down you have two minutes to run the test If you confirm it, then you can stand this way, this way. Then uh, Pastor Austin will be ready to receive you. Now, where are the ushers? That guy that got wounded, take this to him. Tell him that he has a physical wound today because he fell under the anointing, got injured. But he will, he will get healed. He will, he will be okay. But give him this. This he will not always have. 
Give him. So if you conduct your test, you know there's a change, you can come. This is the rule. If something happens, don't keep quiet. If nothing happens, say nothing. We'll take three. Then I'll pray the final congregational prayer. Pray for the ministry. And we'll be on our way. Check when you confirm it. You come. The person that came with a pain on the back. I know more than I know my name. That you have been healed even at this time. I, I see someone in the congregation that has not been able to sleep. You sleep, you wake up about 2 o'clock and you cannot get back to sleep. Leave that one, leave that one, leave that one. Just leave it. You wake up like 2, 2 a.m. in the morning and then you cannot go back to sleep. I, I'm waiting for that person. Waiting for that person. Uh, there's someone that has had an improvement in... in in her sight is a lady you have had an improvement in your sight yes a verifiable improvement in your sight already i'm waiting for you someone that pain pain on your right leg that you've been carrying uh, i challenge you to look for it look for that pain and when you cannot find it you come to me Apostle, sir, the man with the back pain you just mentioned is here. He's had this back pain for the past 12 years. The past 12 so years. while you prayed, the pain disappeared. The pain and I asked him to demonstrate it here for 12 years. He's carrying it for 12 years. He's been carrying it for 12 years. He's also, he wants me to, he says he's also a pastor. Uh, how does that one add up to this presentation right now? <laughs> Come. <laughs> I, I just had to obey. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your servant and I ask, give him a healing ministry. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You see, you have a gift you have refused to develop. Uh, Lord, even this gift too, let it, let it begin to speak. Let it begin to speak. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Papa, there's something wonderful here you. also. This young man said while he was in school, his lecturer punched his eye here and he's been carrying that pain for over two years. Carried the pain but, for yeah, two years. He carried for long. Not but the moment long. You, you prayed about the eye issue, the pain has disappeared. The pain has can't gone. feel the pain at the eye socket. To I, the think, I, I think somebody needs to just celebrate Jesus. Just celebrate Jesus. Yes, come. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh. In Jesus' name. It's permanent. permanent. Papa, there are also two people here. You know what I'm seeing right now? I'm seeing, I'm seeing someone that comes from a family that is rooted deeply in witchcraft and this person has been a victim of witchcraft manipulation for quite some time what i see the hand of the lord doing here is that god wants to empower that person so that under the same circumstances under the same situations you will have authority in the spirit to combat witchcraft so no it's not an amen matter father if what i'm saying is true anywhere that person is locate the person so ushers help me look for that individual if what i'm saying is true the lord will confirm it if it's not true then shame on me If it is true, it will be confirmed. If it's not true, shame on the preacher. God cannot be wrong, but it is the preacher that is wrong.
Receive strength. In the name of Jesus. Do you have another one there? All right. Yes, Pastor. Austin. Yes, sir. You you may. Hey, 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 hey. There's a womb. A womb. Someone's womb in the congregation. Your womb is tied. Now the Lord is going to lose loosen your womb. You will, yeah, you will feel a fire. A fire will be transmitted into that womb. Uh, I know you don't believe. It, don't say amen. It's not an amen matter. A fire will be transmitted into that womb. 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 Bring that lady for me. I went to um Brussels, Brussels is where? Belgium. So Rejoice's twin brother came with his wife. You know his wife is German. So I was ministering like this, then I saw four demons running with a woman's womb. I commanded them to stop. Then I commanded them to return the womb. They could not. When, when they, they, they fell off, so it was a fire that took the womb in slow motion. It took it in slow motion like this and took it. I said the, the owner of this womb will know by fire. That was how a white woman started. And you know that's not the way they behave. She couldn't conceive. After that encounter, she conceived and they just she just gave birth. So what I'm seeing now, I'm seeing a grave. A, a, someone here is dead. You know, I know you don't believe such things. <laughs> Say, God, this guy has come again. Someone in this hall is dead. Your grave has been dug already. Father, in the name of Jesus, that one that the spirit of death is about to catch up with, anywhere he or she is sitting, in this vast auditorium, from my left hand side, to my right hand side, to the back of the hall, from my left hand side, to my right hand side, to the back of the hall, help me find that one. 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 Help me find in the name of Jesus. Ushers, if you find the person, bring the person. If we don't do this, it's either the seventh day or the fourteenth day. Mishap will take place. Woman. Okay. You have received your mirror. Can we pray? And ask the Lord to restore life to him. Sometimes you see some people breathing, but they are not here. He say, La Mama. Imamoria sali, imamina koria sine kelama, maila mamo se kali la mo, ila mama yelo, ina mama yelo ma. Rome na sila yeko ma. Eko mama laite te Ela ma hambre 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 Suva laita cose branda babo de mani ma Ela mo Ye 
go. Leave in the name of Jesus. Yes. So the other time you made mention of two people who couldn't sleep and you said they should come out. The moment you called that case, the two of them stood up and they're here. They said they've not been able to sleep. Uh, you know, come, come. Your household has been contaminated. There's what we call demonic contamination. So you need to fumigate it. Ah, you have struck something in the spirit and the thing is fighting back. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So you will sleep this night and other nights. In the name of Jesus. You are released. Apostle, sir, there's a wonderful testimony here. Testimony. Um, this brother, he's been having this pain inside of his... There's someone that couldn't read without glasses that is reading now. You are the one I'm waiting for. Couldn't read without glasses. You are reading now. I'm waiting for you. Someone couldn't read without glasses. You are reading now. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. You have two minutes to come. You couldn't read without glasses. You are reading now. So you check and come. You have one more minute. You come after the one minute. I can't help you anymore. But I can help you now. You have 30 more seconds. You receive the healing in your eye. Come. Okay. He has refused to come. He's been healed, sir. He's carried this pain for months now. He said the moment you prayed, he was relieved. Normally, the pain goes and come, but the moment you prayed, he was now, relieved. Now, where's the come. pain? On your waist? Come. Yeah, you are healed. I have something to give you. Father, in the name of Jesus. That anointing that makes people conscious of your presence. That anointing that makes the spirit realm so real. So that we can interact seamlessly. With the realities that are formed in the spirit through the Holy Ghost. I ask, oh God, that you will put that anointing on your people. Put that anointing on your people. Okay, the anointing is beginning to form. And this shall be the sign thereof. There is a lady that I'm seeing in the congregation. And there is a great magnitude of this grace that has formed. That is coming on your life now. And the intensity of the grace is beginning to increase.
I see the Lord anointing preachers of the gospel, ministers, with a fresh grace, a fresh dimension of the power of God. There's an eruption. There's something, oh my God. Garments are being changed. Garments are being changed. New robes are being handed out in the spirit. Grace is coming on someone now. The ability to walk miracles. That grace that enables you to speak and God will back it up. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Mama is you are not going back the same way you came. Place. You may be seated. You may be seated. Yes? Yes, sir. This man came out um, when you also mentioned cases on healing. He's had tight chest for the past six years. And he said today, the moment you spoke, the chest decongested the and he released. feels free okay, right feel now. Free now. Can somebody give Jesus a big hand? Oh, we give you praise. We exalt your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Once again, I'm still waiting for that person that got healed in the eyes. He used to use reading glasses. Yes? Ukpore? Yes, sir. He's, had, he's been having this incessant pain whenever he lifts his head at the back and all of that. While the prayers were, were going on, the thing disappeared completely. Disappeared completely. Come. Thank you. Yes, you are healed. You are healed. It's permanent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. Okay, come. Let me give you something. Lord, I ask that you have mercy on your son. Okay, now I bless your hands and I put prosperity in your hands. Amen. I remove the garment of poverty, the garment of the I remove it in the name of Jesus. Okay. You will see what will happen. All right. Papa, she has the issue of sleeping once she wakes up by 2 o'clock in the night. She can't she sleep can't again. Sleep. She can't and then sleep. I said, why didn't she come out since she said she was, the body was weak? The body was weak. So oh, she sorry. just found strength. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, the weight of your body is a demon. That weight. Now you feel.
Let her go. Let her go. Ah, you sleep now. Apostle yep. said there's a case of eye here, the left eye. Um, she said every time she... Why? No, no, let's know why she did not come. No, no, sir. It, I want to explain why she explained. I already asked her. Okay. So she said it, it's because her own, it's the pain, intense pain on the eye and headache. But the moment you pray, the, the intense pain... She's not the one I'm talking about. But, but we give God glory for her case. Come. Ah, yes, you are healed. You are healed. The, the, the eye issue I'm talking about, she's not the one. Now, I'm running away now. Running away. Okay, Apostle, the one with the eye is here, sir. And uh, let's know whether I would disqualify the person. Yeah, not. she says she can read now. Now that you are married, there is a new measure of grace that is committed to you. I see, I've seen it twice. That's why I am saying it in public. For I saw a ladder come down from the heavens. The voice says, come up higher. So in the journey of worship, you will go yet higher. And you have more capacity through the grace of God to take men to that place in the heights of Zion that you function from. May your head always have oil. And may your garments be always white. Hey. I see a great light in the heavens. Kobe Babila Umbreskito Kobe Zaminaita. Let your coast be ex enlarged, expanded, and let your voice be heard in places that were far off. As a congregation, we pray for you and we bless you. In the name of Jesus. She couldn't read little letters. No, no, that's not what I'm interested in. Or at least now, that's not the interest. Let's know. The reason why I called you is because I have something to give. I was told, this, the person you give this thing, I'm going to heal the eyes. So since you delayed, I will no longer give you. That's the issue. Go to the next person. Back, back pain here, sir. Now listen. Yeah, back pain. Back pain here for, for some times intense. Now can you do something? Here. I want to give you something. You are a good man. So I want to I want to do something that you will remember in the next 10 years. Huh? Do you like that? Okay. There's a, there's, a, there's a miracle now here. what is coming on this young man is in 10 years time it will be fully realized in 5 years time you will not look for 1 million and not be able to find it in 5 years from today I know now there, there may be nothing but 5 years from today when you, when you look like when you do like this you will see 1 million When you prayed concerning somebody that had issues with their knee and their leg, she said she was tapping and she kept feeling the pain. The moment you prayed again, she tapped it and the, and pain, the pain was, was gone. gone. There's something else God is doing apart from the healing. Now, this is what I see. I see, I see money. He wants to enter. They need to go back. So it will enter now. Uh -huh. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ela mama ni mzee. 
I see something like um, a silk a silk garment coming from heaven. And uh, the reason why I'm standing Okay. Now that lady will be a carrier of the presence of God. You'll take the presence of God from place to place. Yes? Yes, sir. What's happening uh, here? Most of the about four people's eyes have been healed. All of them. No, no, we don't want to we don't want them. We don't want them. Let's talk to other people. Leave the eye people. Leave the eye, people. He said, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. You also need to believe in his prophet. You need to believe in his prophet. There are things he gives his prophet. Huh? If, you are not, if you are not in alignment with his prophet, they will not give you. Even though it's, it's for you, but it's in, no, no, no. You are not. If I come back another year, maybe two years, you come back. Then we'll negotiate at that Papa, time. Sir, this young man yeah, doesn't yeah. sleep midnight, but the reason why yeah. they had to bring him was because when you spoke about death, there was a pronunciation of threat on him that they would kill him. No. He will leave. This one, yes. You will look for one million. It will be everywhere. You will support your family. So many people in your family, they will see mercy because of. If it is true that God has sent me, this sign will be accomplished. Turns back, pain hurt. Every time he presses it, he feels it. You, you feel right it here. Now he, you pray it, and it's gone, sir. Now, do you know it's an arrow? Do you know an arrow? Okay, you okay? You don't know it. It's an arrow. It's an arrow. Okay, yeah, you are free. Papa, Celebrate. ulcer, ulcer pain ulcer from pains. the chest ulcer gone pains. completely. Ulcer pains. Ulcer pains. Ulcer pains. Thank you. Now, is it that he can't walk? Is it crippled? No, just leave him. Leave him. Don't worry. Don't force him to move. Don't force him. Yeah. Every time he wakes up and sees strange marks on his body, he will ah. have intense pain. But as we are praying, the pain disappeared. Now, we want to... Um, you are in contention with a witch. Mm. So what should we do to the witch? Should we paralyze the witch or... Oh, to kill straight. <laughs> Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we cut this agent of wickedness down. We cut, we cut him or her down. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, walk free, walk free. She just noticed the numb pain, like paralysis sign, paralysis sign the moment. She just noticed it now. You notice it now. Father. Ah, there's an arrow in your body. Yes, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you're free. You're free. Papa, this lady says each time she wakes up, she wakes up with it scratches, itches, and then back pain. But now it's gone. Okay. Yes. The eye people, you can go and sit down. Papa, yes. he couldn't hear with his right ear for the past two months. He went to the hospital, nothing happened. Couldn't hear with but his right ear. 
Come. It opened. You can hear now. I think we need to celebrate Jesus. The people with the eye, please go and sit down. Go and sit down. Don't worry. At least you have your miracle. You have your eye can see. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you for this miracle. We thank you for this miracle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, it's permanent. See, I'm seeing okay. something like white steps before you, my friend, O Gideon. There are three steps. So you've been elevated. You've been elevated. There's an elevation. So if this kind of a spell is cast on you, it doesn't matter how creative you are, the hands will not produce. At this, at those creative you are, the hands will not produce. At this, at those the eye people, eye people have gone. Oh, they've gone. I had to instruct them, as you said. So why is she disturbing you? You two go, go. You know the reason why these people are here. Have you been healed? It's for testimony. Come. Oh, you have a gift you are not using. Okay, let's activate it. Father, commit one strand of fire to her so that her spirit will be open. Commit one strand of fire so that our spirit will be open. Yes. Papa, this young man came into this church feeling very heavy in his body. He's a, a demon. He's a demon. He's a demon. He's a demon. Oh! He's wearing a garment of poverty. Kneel down. Kneel down here. The poverty is not yours. It's your family. It's your family poverty. So repent on behalf of your family right now. Right now. Now pronounce a blessing on the entire family. Now, now, do that now. Ooh, I've seen, I've seen the principality. Have you ever seen anything like an alligator before? Have you ever seen that before? Like an alligator? You have, you, in, in your dream? So, that's the spirit. That's the spirit that operates. If you are still, if you still have some Holy Ghost in you, stretch your hand. Oh, Jesus Christ. Things are coming out. They are coming out. They are coming out. They are coming out. Kurabo seke lahai. You were not ordained to be poor, to walk in poverty. You were not ordained to walk in poverty. Yes, I command the yoke to break. 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 Oh. All right. Lord, use him as an example that this family was not ordained to walk in poverty. Surprising. In three months from today, surprising. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so we pray for the house of Salem. Let your voice in her cry and let men hear. 
I pray for your servant. I pray for his wife. Uphold them. As they manage this altar unto which you have called them, uphold them, prosper them, strengthen them, shine on them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. For those of you that traveled into Nigeria, your trip will be swift and safe. As you go back and try to come again. In Jesus' name. The Lord in this season makes himself available for anyone willing to seek his will. The story of the church through the ages has been traced to revelations, encounters with Jesus. Most of the conversions we have in the Middle East among our cousins has been based on Jesus making himself visible. So Jesus the evangelist is still about his business even now. I'm talking about the philanthropist of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Still doing his work of philanthropy. We are about to see a mighty move of God that will occasion a massive exodus of our cousins into the kingdom of God. You find most of these the, the most zealous people among our ranks in the days to come. Men that are not afraid of death. That will take the gospel to the dry Sahel, Sahara. We're in for good times. We're in for good times. Oh, we celebrate you. We worship you. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We Yeah. 